Okay, welcome to this problem. This is a classical problem of physics called Shoot the Monkey. I'm going to do a three-part video series on this. This first part is just the conceptual part of the problem. Then I'm going to derive uh, algebraically the proof of this, and then I'm going to do two different examples with numbers on the third video. But basically, this, this is a very interesting concept of physics, which demonstrates the effect that a field can have on two different objects uh, falling at the same rate, and it produces unintuitive outcomes, outcomes that you would not expect. And basically the idea is this, there's a hunter here and there's a monkey in the tree and he's trying to hunt the monkey, okay, but the monkey drops from the tree and starts falling, okay. So the question is how does the hunter shoot the monkey? Does the hunter follow the monkey down with the dart or the cannon as it goes down and then shoot? Or does the uh, person just leave the aim exactly at the monkey right when it lets go? And the answer to the question is uh, the, the hunter has to a align the arrow or the cannon or whatever it is exactly with the monkey and the instant the monkey lets go uh, it doesn't matter what velocity he shoots from. So that doesn't sound intuitive, right? That sounds like there's no way that could be. How could he shoot with different velocities and he's always going to hit the monkey? Well the idea is this let's say that he's shooting with a large velocity like this and the instant the monkey lets go okay he's gonna shoot this off and what's gonna happen is the monkey's gonna fall a little bit and this cannon's gonna come and hit the monkey like this okay so that's the first example here with a large uh, relatively large initial velocity it's gonna go like this and it's gonna hit the monkey and some people actually have to see this to believe it because it's hard to, be to believe this experiment until you see it but it's, it can easily be done what would happen is if he did it with a lower velocity here, okay, the monkey would fall further, right? So this case, the monkey might fall further, but no matter what happens, it's still going to hit the monkey. So in that case, with a medium velocity, uh, it's still going to hit the monkey like this, okay? And even if he if it shoots this with uh, uh, if it, even if he shoots this with a much smaller velocity. Okay, uh, let's say that he shoots it with a smaller velocity here. Okay, uh, it's still going to hit the monkey no matter what. As long as he lines it up exactly with that line of sight, the monkey's going to fall further, right? But if he shoots it with less of a velocity, it's still going to find its way to hit the monkey. Okay, so the idea here is that um, no matter what happens with the speed of this, no matter what happens with the speed of the dart. Okay, it's always going to hit the monkey, no matter what. It's always going to hit the monkey, no matter what. And that's I, I know that's hard to imagine, but the idea here is this: when the hunter releases the cannon or the arrow or whatever it is, the minute he releases it, it's in the air. What's in control of this thing? Gravity's in control, right? So we know that there's a force vector going down on this, the, the force of gravity, and they ha it has an acceleration of gravity, right? So this has an acceleration of gravity, and this has the same exact acceleration of gravity on this object that the ball does. So basically what's happening is, is that this monkey starts falling at the same rate as this ball. So they both experience that same force of gravity. Uh, and, and what happens is, that's what allows it to always hit the monkey. And another way to con conceptualize this is, is the following. Let's say that this was a, a plain table. Okay, and there was no gravity involved. Okay, so let me take away the tree here. Let's say that this was a table, and the monkey's laying on or the ground, and the monkey's laying on the ground here, and the person's laying on the ground. If he shoots a ball like this along the ground, it's going to get straight to the monkey, right? If he shoots it this way, it's going to get there quicker, right? If he shoots it this way, it's going to go slow, but it's still going to get there, right? That's the first layer. Then the next layer is adding on gravity, right? So it's the same concept. It's still in that line of sight, but now they both start to feel the effects of gravity in equal equal parts, right? Equal accelerations, and so it will always hit. If he goes really slow with the gun, the monkey's just going to fall further, like I said before, and it's going to take longer to get there. Okay, so in the next video I'm going to do the proof of this. I'm going to prove it algebraically and then we're going to, we're going to do this with some numbers.